Hi. Little Boxes Part 3 and we have our third oscillator. I got this one from Look Mum No Computer. He refers to it as a super simple oscillator because the circuit is super simple and it oscillates. If you've not actually seen uh, the stuff on his channel then go over there and check it out. He knows a hell of a lot more about this subject than I do and he builds some really fun crazy stuff so yeah well worth going and checking it out but not yet watch this one first then go and check him out what this circuit uses is a single transistor that's set up in what's called the reverse avalanche mode I'm not going to get technical about what that means if you want to find out what that is like I say, go and check out Look Mum No Computer and on his site he's got links to a guy who talks in even more detail about it so if you really want to do the science behind it it's out there but it's not on this video. What this video is about is how simple it is to build one and how much fun you can have once you've got it. So building it takes there's, there's very few components as you'll see we'll look inside the box in a moment and the way you get it to work actually is, is you cut off the middle leg of the transistor sounds pretty brutal but what that does is it causes it to start and self oscillate once the voltage across the other pins reaches a, a certain value so it's important that you get the value uh, get the right transistor such that it operates at the right voltage fortunately there is one that works down at 9 volts so in the principle of the little boxes I can run this one from a single 9 volt battery. What I actually did was I built three of these and wired them together into one box. So this is called Avalanche 3. What you can see on the box, the three red knobs, they are the frequency controls for each of the oscillators. There's a little LED on the each knob that shows the flashes at the rate of the oscillator. Um, the green knob is a volume control. The blue knob, I put a low pass filter on it, passive low pass filter, the same as the one I used on the Neo Punk box. It doesn't seem to do much on this box. Um, it's one of those things, try ideas out, there's all part of the fun of playing with this. Some work, some don't, some you tweak on this one. I got distracted by my next project so I never got around to actually doing anything with it so I tend to just ignore it. You see the sockets on it, there's a, there's a power and off switch as usual um, and then you can see that there's a, an output socket down on the bottom here and then above each of the red knobs there are there's another input socket, each of those is a CV input. Now CV, control voltage, when I was talking about the previous oscillator, the NAND gate oscillator, I said that it didn't have a that chip didn't have a dedicated CV input like the 555 timer does, but there is a way of putting CV into an oscillator that doesn't have a dedicated input. Same applies to the transistors, obviously there's no CV input on a transistor, but we can get around this by using what's called a Vactrol. Again, other websites talk about this in a lot more detail, but very quickly, very simply, we need to convert a variable voltage into a variable resistance so we can kind of remotely twiddle the frequency knob. Right, if we connect a bright LED up to our control voltage input, as the voltage changes, the brightness of the LED will change. If we then take a light dependent resistor and point that at the LED, as the brightness of the LED changes, then the resistance on the LDR, the light dependent resistor, changes. So if we solder the pins of our LDR across the frequency pot on our oscillator, then we can use a control voltage to control the resistance across the pot so basically we can remotely twiddle the pot if you like 
with our control voltage. Of course, you don't want stray light getting into this, otherwise it's not really controlled, it's kind of chaotic. The way I get around this is I use heat shrink tubing. So, stick the two things together, put them in a bit of heat shrink tubing, warm it up, shrink it down, and then with a pair of pliers just basically pinch the ends of the heat shrink tubing so it kind of seals them up and you've got a light tight sealed unit. A backdrop. Okay, let's have a look inside the box and see what this looks like when we put it all together. Okay, so this is the Amalite 3 box, as I've just described. You can see there we've got the controls as described. So you've got the three oscillators, you've got the filter which really doesn't do much at all, and then you've got a volume control and then CV inputs. I put a CV input for the on the filter as well, but being as how the filter really doesn't do anything, I've again had very little success with that. But if ever I get round to it, I might try and play with that idea and see whether there's some way of getting it to work. Um, but as I say, I get easily distracted by the next project, so um, tend not to uh, get round to doing things. Anyway, without rambling on, let's have a look at what we've got inside the box. Once again, we run it from a single 9 volt battery a power switch. I haven't got a an LED link to the power switch on this one because it's obvious when the power's on because all the LEDs on the oscillators light up. Um, the three oscillators are built onto three little boards and the boards on this one actually they're, they're supported on the back of the uh, the potentiometers themselves so they, they actually the, the, poten the pots act as the, the mounting for the board and what we've got, we've got the hidden somewhere at the back of here, we've got the transistor uh, and then you've got a, a capacitor and again it's like uh, on the previous oscillators the value of the capacitor sets the frequency range of the oscillator and again the bigger the value of the capacitor the lower the frequencies so you can have a range of frequencies on these um, what I've actually done on these, I've, I've built a little breakout board which takes the output from each one of these oscillators, puts it onto a single board. The output from that then goes through the um, uh, filter there and then finally goes into this last little board which is the uh, linear power boost circuit that I talked about which basically amplifies what's coming out of these three up to a level so we can actually make it usable even so it's a pretty low level signal but as you can see um, it looks kind of a bit leery when all the wires are in there and it's, it's all kind of wired up um, but the reality is that even with the little amplifier on the end there, each of these circuits has got no more than half a dozen components on it and each of the components costs pennies so this really is a very cheap and cheerful way of building yourself a nice little not just a single oscillator but we've actually got a nice little drone unit here as you are about to hear So let's have a listen to what we can get out of this little box. Instead of plugging in my usual uh, little amplified speaker, I'm actually going to plug in my guitar amp um, because the output on this is is pretty low. So hopefully this will this will uh, give us a bit better signal. So. Turn the power on, turn the volume on, straight away you can hear we've got a drone sound. So these two I've actually set to fairly 
low frequency. This one, I've given it more of a, a high frequency component. But you can see here, just that's just the straight output from the box itself. The filter, as you can hear, <laughs> really doesn't do much, so let's ignore that. Call it a work in progress if you like, or a work that's stalled, it's not actually in progress anymore. But yeah, not unpleasant sounds coming out of this little drone box. Right, let's stick a control voltage into it. So, what I've actually done there, I've plugged the CV out on uh, my beat step into the CV in on the first oscillator which is the one with the high frequency input and uh, let's have a listen what happens when we feed it a sequence you can still change the range over which the sequence will uh, operate but what's happening here that Vactrol device that we showed you the CV voltage is going into the LED the LED brightness is changing according to what the sequencer is pumping out which changes the resistance which is operating across this pot so it's not completely replacing the pot, as you can hear. But it kind of... they work together. We've got CV input on all three oscillators. So let's shove something into one of the others. So with a bit of luck be able to turn right down there so what we've got going here now is I've got a sequence running into oscillator 1 which is the higher frequencies that you can hear oscillator 2 is just acting as a drone oscillator 3 is actually taking in a, an, a, an arpeggio signal from um, the key step sequencer. So we've got the beat step shoving a sequence into one, number two is operating as a drone and number three has got the arpeggiator on it. The signal that you're hearing is actually just the straight signal, there's no processing on the amp. However, if you want to start adding things, put a bit of reverb in there. chorus bit of 
phaser. there you go super simple oscillator built into the Avalanche 3 little box really simple circuit really easy to build costs next to nothing in terms of its components so go on have a go build your own <laughs>